I would say that it's a film about role playing and the ways in which fantasy and our real lives compete with one another. My character, uh, oh my God, what's my character's name? <laughs> I just asked him that. Hal is a, uh, in a sentence or two, just a rich asshole. Just a rich, <laughs> no. Um, he's, uh, he's looking for love in all the right places. I play Rebecca. And uh, she's a dominatrix by trade, um, but I guess that's also, uh, I, uh, she's also looking for love. Uh, for a number of years I've been interested in the idea of making a film, a thriller in particular, about a dominatrix because I think that um, great thrillers tend to have paradoxes at the heart of them and there's something paradoxical inherently about the role of a dominatrix because a dominatrix has total control over her client but she also has zero control over her client right outside of the realm of the fantasy so that had been on my mind for some time and then more specifically uh, in June 2020 I was on the phone with my friend Micah Bloomberg who wrote the film and he was saying that he'd love to be able to just write some scenes and he suggested that we develop something together with him uh, writing and for me to direct. And so uh, I pitched him this uh, vague idea about a dominatrix who robs a client. That was uh, the beginning point for me. And then Micah told me, funnily enough, that he had written a play, a one-act play, a number of years earlier about a dominatrix and her client uh, set in a hotel room. So we realized that we both had this interest, uh, this fascination with this space, and we started talking about the story and the story built from there. I honestly I like talking and like I liked how um how dialogue heavy it was and how um one of the things that Zach and I were talking about was that Chris wasn't there um was that um um within like a, a very confined setting you ultimately have a lot of freedom um and that with all of these rules in place that um you know like Every, every, everything is so specific and so um, it's kind of like I think there's less anxiety when you're told exactly what to do and you weirdly have more freedom within that role if that makes sense. I liked Zach's first movie a lot and I wanted to I read the script I know Micah as well as a writer wanted to work with him and Margaret and I also have been sort of like toying around trying to like find something to do together over the last I don't know a few years um, so this this kind of felt perfect because it's oh, it was like just us two and um, you know it was one of the first jobs I had done in a while after the pandemic you know so it, was, it felt like doing a play also I, it was like a good it was a good uh, piece of work to sort of get re-inspired again because I sort of got pretty comfortable with uh, not working and uh, I really liked not working and uh, so the, it, it was like challenging enough and obviously with limited days and like uh, a pretty high page count to, to do every day. Um, you know, it was gonna be, it was gonna, it was gonna be work. It was gonna kind of be like a rush to, to, to the finish line, but I was, I was kind of up for that. I interned at, at a hotel uh, company for like three months before, for like three months before filming this, just like see how like hotel, well, you know. Uh, He's still living there actually, <laughs> as part of his research for press. I'm just kidding, I didn't do any, uh, I, didn't, uh, I did no research. I did no research either, but I, uh, to, to, to what Chris was saying, it's like it was a really tight shoot, you know, one day weekends, eight, 17, 18 days of shooting, 18 days, 18 days of shooting, mm -hmm. and I just um, wanted to like have the least amount of work as possible in those 18 days, so I like <laughs> just uh, made a point to learn every single line prior to beginning, like front to back like a play, so that we could just kind of have, yeah. have a nice time. Learn the scenes and do them. I, that's what I yeah. primarily did. Yeah. And, oh, I'm sorry. No. Uh, well, no, and I just to speak to that, I think um, what Margaret and Chris like seized on, and what I was feeling was that because I had done my own research, just reading about the profession in the development stage, and I know Micah did that as well. Um, but what we I was sort of feeling as the script came together was that these characters are quite specific and unique, um, and Rebecca is not a typical dominatrix in any way, shape, or form. She's a psychological dominatrix. She works, um, she doesn't touch her clients. It's a mental job for her, which is a very unique, specific kind of thing that um, was specific to this character. 
So it was less about researching the field or giving a kind of docudrama quality to it and more about um, immersing the audience uh, in the specifics of these two characters. So with um, Margaret and Chris, I think they were kind of pouring themselves into the specificity of exactly who these specific characters were as scripted. And I think that uh, is, is demonstrated in the quality of the performances. So that was the approach. Well, personally, I, I mean, I think it's for all of us, but yeah, personally, I think that um, it'll be interesting to see if the movie makes people question and consider the role of role playing and fantasy in their everyday lives. Um, we all create roles for ourselves in our relationships with other people, often unconsciously, but there's a big difference between someone out in the world left to their own devices and who someone is when they enter into an intimate relationship with another person. And there's a, a, a fit that happens when two people link up in a certain way. And I think what's interesting is the question of whether the, um, the uh, relationship between the two characters in the film is really so different from what any relationship is between two people out there in the world. Something that Chris has mentioned too is that it's kind of a love story at heart and that ideally it's kind of just a fun ride, maybe? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's I, I'm, I enjoy movies without messages, you know, as well, you know, but, uh, and it's not that this doesn't have one, but I think, um, you know, the, the, there's a surreal element to the whole, this world, you know, you don't even know what time of day it is, really. There's like, it's sort of, um, it's, you know, even the set, it sort of feels a bit like a dollhouse in some, in, in some ways, you know, so it's like, it's your it's it's this kind of odd little uh almost airless uh chamber piece you know what i mean or it just feels like i'm or not airless but <laughs> but uh you know yeah it's claustrophobic and it's it's sort of it lives in its own universe and i think um you know there's like no rule the the rules of of anything sort of go out the window you know you can kind of act out or you know I don't know. There's it was it was fun to do, and uh, I I don't I just hope people enjoy it really in the end, in the end of the day. And if not, I don't care either. <laughs> you know, watch watch it. Don't whatever. <laughs>